this is a second of a two-part series of talks that deal with what I characterize as unacceptable rates of diagnostic error. I would encourage you to look at the first of these two that, that uh, identify the causes uh, of these errors. And the whenever I identify problems, I like to propose and develop solutions. And uh, this presentation is going to show what I believe is a modern teaching method that is at least a significant path forward to um, creating much less error and therefore much less harm. As I said in the first uh, of these two talks, uh, I'm not going to dwell on, on links or email addresses or references. Um, and I have some essays that uh, correlate with these two talks. If you contact me, I can uh, send them to you. Uh, in addition to the series of essays I'll uh, expose to you in a while. So please feel free to stop the presentation if there's something that I'm going to just breeze over and you want more information. So, um, in what we call UFL, or UF Radiology, WITI, Wisdom in Diagnostic Imaging is the acronym. We have what we call learning pathways to develop competency in a competency-based training methodology with a, um, a true evaluation rubric for that competency, and I'll show you how we do that But um, in this talk, but uh, that was really the subject of the first talk, our data from our method of assuring or testing competency. Because you cannot have true competency-based education unless you have an authentic testing methodology to prove that the competency has been attained. So how does this jive with the, uh, the uh, ACGME? expectations for training. Well, the ACGME has done a really nice job of, of over the, whatever the training period for a residency is, of creating uh, milestones. This is an extraordinary um, uh, advance by the ACGME over the last you know, 10 or 15 years. Um, and they have a, uh, a curve from the, uh, through the first through fourth year and maybe the fifth year if you do a fellowship of radiology on to what they propose would be the job of the MOC um, to uh, where you should be in terms of uh, competency up the y-axis. And so you can see if you just follow this across that by the end of the second year or third year, somewhere in that envelope, a resident should be competent. And that's a nice goal, assuming you have a curriculum that gets them to competency. And that a radiology resident should be proficient, which I guess means more than competent. I'm not quite sure what proficient means um, when they graduate. And then become expert as an aspirational goal. Well, that's interesting because, as I said in the first talk, patients expect experts. They don't expect proficiency or base competency. They expect that when they get a report that's rendered by a radiologist, that it's an expert interpretation. And if it's not, I think it falls short of our patient's expectations. But, you know, that's another point that can be debated. Well, that curve is very interesting because there's, some, there's a lot of really good educational research out there um, uh, that uh, embodies these ideas. This is by Dreyfus, uh, and you can see this curve uh, on, um, on their uh, idea of how professional competency or competency in general should be uh, attained. Uh, it's in two chunks. One's in training, okay, and so that sort of agrees with the uh, GME curve. But then it relies on what's called deliberate practice. And that's also an uh, idea promoted by Erickson in deliberate practice. And all that means is you're going to have to commit to lifelong learning if you're going to become a true expert. 
right? Or you'll just stay at proficient or competent, whatever that means, and that's not, I don't think, what patients expect. And you may just deteriorate into um, something less than um, what a physician should be in medical decision making. So if you apply modern educational theory, and there's some really five or six theories out there, including Dreyfus and Erickson, uh, and there's others, Kolb on, on, um, on uh, experiential learning. But they're all on a platform that educators refer to as the uh, Bloom Taxonomy of uh, Education. And uh, this is my modification of, of our approach to the Bloom Taxonomy that goes from base knowledge to understanding to applying the knowledge to, it, to deep analysis of the uh, uh, and evaluation of, of the process and then being able to create a work product. So right here on the right, I've listed all the things that are in our e-learning uh, tool called Witty Learn. Um, and so it, it includes lectures and video to transmit knowledge. It has um, report guides to assure uh, proper comprehension and, um, and uh, application of knowledge. Then for deliberate practice, it has case studies that you have to go through and evaluate. And then by that process, you can learn to produce an expert report, which is at the top of the learning period, the create uh, pyramid, sorry. Um, so. That's how we have uh, uh, developed our educational tools inside of our e-learning curriculum with those in mind. So let's look at our e-learning curriculum, um, which um, I'm recording this at, uh, in June, mid-June of 2021, and we expect the, the new iteration of this platform to be released uh, no later than mid-July of 2021. But the structure is about the same. So in this, we have uh, a curriculum. Uh, we have report guides, which are ways of showing the discipline of interpreting a study. We have opportunities for self-evaluation and practice, deliberate practice, as we saw in those uh, learning theory slides. And we also have a function that uh, we call consult. And in that, uh, that's meant to be a tool that can be used as decision support. You can pull up this uh, site, and if you have a difficult problem, you can access an expert uh, to help you along uh, in, in that particular um, case concept or scenario. So that's what uh, are the building blocks of this educational and consulting tool. Um, what is that tool meant to do? That tool is meant to create experts, okay? Now, we can't create experts in everything all at once, but if you break radiology training down into competencies, there's probably in critical care radiology about four to 600 competencies that need to be accomplished and tested. And in all of radiology, there's probably a 1,000 or 2,000 competencies that we do every day. So you could create a curriculum similar to what we have, because there's no curriculum in radiology that I can identify anyway. And, and a way of breaking that curriculum into competencies, presenting that material in an e-learning environment, and then offering an evaluation rubric that can prove that a uh, expert level of competency has been achieved. So that's, that's what I'm proposing as a solution. Um, why did we develop this? And that's what I went over in the first of these two talks. 
So an expert is not somebody who's just competent or proficient. An expert is an expert because the expert goes beyond those basics and calls a study negative with a very high degree of confidence if it's negative and recognizes fact patterns that if they're interpreted incorrectly lead to interpretive error. So experts avoid those pitfalls and go beyond uh, the basics. So what we have done at the University of Florida to discover these educational gaps is our simulations, and I invite you to look at the first um, of these two talks uh, to see that. These um, are based on things that are not my ideas. Um, with regard to the design related to calling studies negative, I credit Leo Rigler, who taught me this. Hardest thing to do is call a chest x-ray negative. Um, that's why we have a rules-based approach uh, in our tool to call studies negative. That's why we include negative studies in our testing rubrics, which you'll never find even on the old oral boards. There was no negative study. So right away, that's an inauthentic test because it doesn't test what we do every day. A lot of our studies are negative. So if you don't know what your um, false positive rate is, you've left a lot out of education. We do not explicitly in radiology in many places teach calling a study negative. My other teacher, Bill Hanafi, I'll credit him with the fact that we have to be situationally aware. We have to understand what's relevant in a particular clinical context. We need to understand what clinicians need to know, and we need to be really specific in our reports at providing that information. And so, I'll credit, again, not me, Rigler, Leo, with that concept, Bill, with this concept. And assuming you want to accomplish the goals by these two great teachers, who I was fortunate enough to uh, be educated by, um, you need to ad adopt adult learning principles that create critical thinking and what's called fluid intelligence. What does fluid intelligence mean? It means you can think on your feet in a particular situation. And when you encounter something you don't understand, you can reason to a proper solution. So in this tool, we have leveraged modern educational IT and adult learning principles, as you'll see. Uh, what are the building blocks? Normal anatomy, normal variance, some structure by which to call a study negative, uh, avoiding this nonsense of gestalt reading of study. The key is observational discipline, because until you eliminate observational error, you don't have the proper substrate to create accurate interpretations. So this begins and ends with a tool that teaches observational discipline, which I'll submit is not included as, as a disciplined curriculum uh, item. So how do we create experts? Remembering that we want learning pathways to lead to aspirational expert. We have to do that uh, during training and after training, and we have to do it in a way that embodies deliberate practice. So if you're going to accept our teaching methodology, you got to be willing to evaluate your own thinking uh, process. Success in using our tool is based on your character. It's not easy to use this tool. It takes a lot of discipline. And uh, we assume that a complete physician has the habit of being truth-seeking, truth systematic, and prudent on behalf of patients. So the model that best fits that is a competency-based model where you have to prove you're competent. And so we are going to emphasize critical thinking. We're going to do this with an educational approach that avoids this see something and give a differential diagnosis mentality. Uh, there's much more to the job than seeing a white thing in a brain and saying it's one of these four things. That's not the job. We're going to develop a rules-based approach to interpretation with this tool, and we're going to show this with situational awareness and clinical context, and we're going to integrate these decisions 
into the medical imaging process. That's the goal. And, uh, and in doing that, we'll avoid false negatives and we'll explain what a negative study means in a given clinical context. And in this tool, we also assert acuity of the findings, uh, state a degree of confidence in a report, eliminate observational interpretive error, and eliminate the harm that it causes. Those are the goals. This is done with a defined competency-based curriculum using adult learning principles and, again, an uh, evaluation rubric to assure competency mastery, development of fluid intelligence to these goals. And again, I'll move through the slides. You can slow this down if you want to read them completely because I want to spend the rest of the time showing you the tool. You know the goal. So here is what we offer. So let's understand the learning pathway. So the learning pathway in UF Witty, the goal is to create competency slash proficiency and expert to move them through those things we saw on the envelope of expectations. So we have a curriculum. And so we invite the person to study the curriculum. And in studying the curriculum, we have a textbook-like approach, a menu or a table of contents. You choose the subject you want. You choose then on another screen the particular topic in that uh, uh, area. And so here's the uh, pathway uh, as you see it in the software. You're in temporal bone. And then you choose a specific module. Because under temporal bone, the, the competencies that we've identified in the critical care domain are uh, these topics, acute and subacute bacterial otomastoiditis, skull base osteo, and temporal bone trauma. So you choose what you want to study. So let's, we're in temporal bone, we're going to choose acute and subacute osteomyelitis. And then the uh, tool in the curriculum mode invites you to look at a basic video and what we call a report guide. The report guide is simply like a pre-flight checklist, checklist, sorry of all the observations that need to be made in that, uh, in that uh, potential problem. So here is the invitation to look at uh, the uh, report guide, and I'll show you examples of that in a moment. And here is um, the uh, uh, invitation to look at a um, related video with the report guide. And this is um, a, about a 20 or 30 minute lecture on the topic, an introductory lecture to that specific entity, okay? So we invite you to evaluate the process, study the report card, understand the type of observations you're going to have to make, watch a video that you see in this case is about 20 minutes long with the expert saying this is how this, uh, the, the anatomy, pathophysiology, and clinical context of this problem in 20 minutes or so easily digestible. We then uh, in, invite uh, uh, the person to a, um, an experience that matches the clinical experience. There's a typical history, physical exam, findings uh, that, that will be embodied in a final report on this. But what we really invite you to in the report guide is a series of, of questions. So, um, and so in this context, uh, we, um, we ask these questions and see that we state the question in the affirmative. The sigmoid plate of the mastoid is eroded, okay? And so that, um, so that this must be confirmed or negated by the observer. And so that leads to the fact that if all the observations are negated, if you answer no, that means the study should be normal, right? If you go through all these and they're all no, then the study's normal. Because we've asked, we've stated the external auditory canal is abnormal. The middle ear mastoid is, so we don't leave it up to the person to say it's abnormal or abnormal. We state it as abnormal and it has to be negated, which hopefully assures the person is going to have a good look at the finding. And then, so what are the positives? So if they're all no's, then it's negative, right? 
uh, a negative study. But the yeses are, and maybe there's five yeses. That's the substrate for reasoning and critical thinking. Those are the observations that need to be um, uh, uh, culled into a, um, a report and an impression. So let's look what happens. So you might say, oh, you come to this and you don't know the anatomy, you don't know this and that, and the introductory video wasn't enough. But so what happens when you ask this question, you're not sure what the petrous apex is. So what we've done is when you hover over the little blue thing, we pop up a modal window that says, okay, here's an example of an eroded outer cortex of the mastoid here and here. So we say, okay, you're looking at this observation, you hover over the blue, and it shows you what you're looking for. Not in that case, but just in general. So if the student is unfamiliar with this, we didn't think it was fair to ask these questions without at least some leading education specific to the question. And that, that happens for all the observations in all the cases. We then ask uh, for um, you know, a typical uh, differential diagnosis. We've changed this from providing differentials to just asking for a summary, a type statement of what you think the diagnostic uh, is. If you want to slow down the video, you can see how each of these steps confirm, conforms to the Bloom taxonomy of learning. I'm not going to read all those. So then what do we do? We then invite more practice. We say, okay, now we've introduced you to this. We've introduced you to the concept of the report guide and what you need to do in this scenario. We've introduced you to the topic with a 20-minute lecture. So um, we want you to go and uh, do some uh, sample cases, right? Uh, so the first part of the educational experience is introduce you to the tools. The next part is to invite a trip through a uh, case. And so um, uh, we're going to work on, move on to how you get to the derivative work product. So in that, we show um, a um, final report as an expert would produce it, and we show a video as the expert would take that particular case. So what we're trying to do in this is provide much, as much side-by-side uh, interaction without a live person being there of the expert interacting with the learner. So in the in the uh, in this setting you see this is a four minute video on this case of bilateral coalescent mastoiditis with intracranial complications, right? And in this case it was me who takes the case and and in that way, replicating as much as possible the attending at the workstation with the student. And then what's shown down here is how I would actually uh, dictate a real report. Because, of course, we're not going to have a report that has all of those elements of the report guide in it. We're going to have a report that has a summary of the pertinent negatives and pertinent observations and then an impression. And so that's what this shows, a standard reporting structure here. Um, it's an anatomically structured uh, final report in general. And you can see uh, this is what the final report looks like so that the learner can see. We go from that, that sort of stilted, very inclusive report guide uh, to, a, to a, um, a report that looks like one that, first of all, the expert would actually render. This is a report that I would actually render. And one that is a, a, a work product coming out of the um, observations and both positive and negative experience and applying the, uh, what we call the report guide. Again, I'm not going to go through all of the uh, ways that this relates to the Bloom taxonomy. And... The other uh, elements of this are that in these critical care environments, there's some expected professional behavior, right? So the first is a meaningful report. So we've just shown that, right? We've shown the case, shown the report guide. We've shown the, uh, the final report. The expert has taken the case to explain how they would handle that. 
But there's another part to professional behavior that we believe, especially in the critical care environment, we have to provide for, and that's um, useful recommendations based on acuity. So we include that as part of the exercise of learning. And uh, then we go on after that initial, that's, so that's the initial experience. Then we go on and say, okay, now we've given you this introduction. We've familiarized yourself with our tools. Now we're going to give you a bunch of cases to practice on your own. And so as you go through the menu um, and do this, you can see there's a whole bunch of cases down here, right? And there are, there are various scenarios or various cases inside this clinical scenario of uh, acute otomastoiditis with or without complications. And you can go in and you can uh, choose a case. And uh, we ask people to complete at least two to get to the novice level, go through this. And you can see here's the, the cases that uh, you can choose from right there. So you can choose all of the cases, one at a time to, to go through, or one. And what do you do when you go through it? In order to get up this curve, you have to do this deliberate practice, right? So we provide that opportunity. So as you uh, do this, this tool, as you go through now these practice cases on your own after the introductory experience I just described, you get self-assessment and feedback along the way. So you get practice with feedback, and if you do enough, you can satisfy idea of deliberate practice. So you get a typical history and physical. You get a viewer, which is now visage with all the DICOM images, just like you do in real life. So you have all the DICOM images uh, there. And you go through those DICOM images side to side with these questions that are in the report guide. And you just click on yes or no, if you agree or disagree. And remember, all these are asked in the affirmative again. I've already shown you that, right? And I've already gone over the fact that if all your answers are no, then the study should be negative, right? So you get all the DICOM images, you get the report guides, you go through them. So what happens inside the report guides for feedback, right? So here's what you're doing. You're answering all these questions, yes or no, and that's your responses as a learner are over here. And then the experts answer to all those questions presented in another screen after you've done all your uh, answering are over here. So you get to match your answers against the expert answers. But there's an additional layer of feedback. Each observation, right, builds a fact pattern, whether it's normal or abnormal, okay? Uh, and, uh, and if they're all no, then it builds a, com, a, a gradient that suggests the study should be negative. Um, uh, and every time you agree with the expert, it validates your observation. So that's feedback saying, I saw this, I think it was or wasn't there, Expert agrees with you, immediate feedback, line-by-line -line feedback. And we've added another dimension, uh, uh, that when the expert puts these in, these are not exact duplications of the question you were asked. These provide additional information. So if there's relevant additional information, whether you agree or disagree, you get line-by-line -line feedback of a more granular nature on each finding. I hope that's understandable. This is not the original question that's asked. This is a line that the, um, the uh, um, teacher put in there uh, in response to that question, whether they say yes or no, okay? So in this case, they say, uh, yes, the mastoid's abnormal, and it's abnormal because I can't see the septi. And, uh, and then, but, diffusion-weighted images are consistent with cholesteatoma, right? That wasn't asked. All that was asked was whether the mastoid was normal. All, all that was stated was the mastoid is abnormal. So this is line-by-line -line feedback. For every question, you take the time to think about and answer. Um, so uh, I think we satisfy adult learning principles in that we, we give you a challenge, and adults want challenges in learning. 
and they want it to be relevant to, uh, to what they do. And so this is all relevant to what the learner does. You make observations, you create interpretations, you understand the clinical situation and, and the need to respond and make recommendations if it's appropriate. So this adheres to adult learning principles. In the same way, we're giving you feedback step-by-step step from the expert. And in fact, at the end of each of these cases, um, uh, and, uh, and oh, by the way, the expert, sorry. <laughs> you give your answer, right, about the diagnosis, you type it in, and then you get to compare it in the new iteration of this with the expert's answer, as well as the provision of the expert report. And here's where we ask for the exercise of uh, making recommendations and uh, uh, saying whether you think this is uh, emergent, urgent, or routine reporting situation. Again, mimicking the professional responsibility in that. So what you would type in after you make all those observations, get the expert feedback in them, you would type in your, uh, your, uh, your uh, answer. It, once you've chosen whether you, what recommendations you'd make, you get what the expert would do. In this case, I tell the ER to call otolaryngology. And then uh, you assign whether you think this is urgent, emergent, and the, uh, and the expert uh, assigns. And you can assess your professional responsiveness to that of an expert. And those are not right or wrong situations, but um, they, they do mimic the real situation. And the, the last feedback we, we get is the instructor, once again, takes the case. So imagine that you're sitting at the, um, the view box, you've gone through, you've got your report there, your attending is um, uh, reviewing it, made corrections and all that, and the attending would spend a minute or two with you summarizing how they would approach that problem. Well, we spend more than a minute or two. Typically, we're between two and five minutes with a little video on how we, we would approach that case. Uh, so again, fee summary feedback. And then, of course, we offer an opportunity to go do some more cases for deliberate learning. So in the first talk, I suggested that our job to eliminate the substantial errors that still are very common in, in ENT imaging in the critical care setting, that as educators, we had a challenge to eliminate those educational gaps. And we need to do that by a combination of creating a knowledge base, a discipline, and then medical wisdom. So the wisdom part in this tool is that feedback, okay? Each question, that feedback where the attending changes that phrase to a more meaningful phrase, if the learner has the discipline to actually read all those, they'll get a correction in each line. If the learner has the discipline of, of listening in a diligent way to the expert taking the case at the end, they'll learn how to approach these scenarios as an expert. This all relies on the ethics of the learner and whether they're disciplined enough to use this tool. Um, and so I invite you to uh, use this tool to, uh, to experience in the Bloom taxonomy of learning methodology, acquiring knowledge, the discipline, and medical wisdom with the feedback that's provided. I hope this made sense to you. I'll invite you to the essays on why I think medical education in general, but radiology educational uh, is deficient as it currently stands, and that's not me talking, that's the persistent error, 30% error since the 1940s, late 1940s, that's still documented in the literature at the same rate these days. Uh, we, we need to do something as educators to change that. Please uh, look at those if you're uh, interested. I invite you to our um, witty.xray.ufl.edu, or just our UFL radiology uh, website, uh, where you can see things like this, and not only that, but other educational media. Uh, we're in the midst of uh, creating more educational media, uh, hopefully in partnership with our clinical colleagues. Uh, much of it will be based on these errors we're discovering with our simulation 
so that we can disseminate this information and create better outcome for patients. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.